Welcome to this three video series on plate tectonics. I'm Aida Awad from Broward College. The learning targets for this video are to list evidence that was used to support the continental drift hypothesis and to discuss the formation and breakup of Pangaea. The other four learning targets will be covered in the following two videos. First to start off with, Alfred Wegener published his Origin of Continents and Oceans in 1915. And this was the theory of continental drift, which suggested that continents drifted to their present positions over a period of millions of years. Now, Alfred Wegener had significant evidence for his theory of continental drift, which we'll be looking at piece by piece in just a few minutes in the next few slides. But his theory was not accepted by the scientific community primarily because he really didn't have a mechanism that explained how continents were actually moving, what was causing them to move. So let's look at some of the evidence that he used. First piece of evidence, which you actually might have heard about when you were much younger, was that some of the continents look like they fit together like jigsaw puzzle pieces. So if we start with this bottom diagram, that shows the continents pretty much as they are today. And we start to think back in time how they might have looked based on evidence that we have now. You can see that some of the continents do actually fit back together. So here, 65 million years ago in the Cretaceous time period, we have Africa and uh, Eurasia closing up the Mediterranean Sea. And we have Greenland attached to North America and closing up part of that northern Atlantic. Moving back a little further in time, 150 years ago, you see the big one, which is the puzzle-like fit of South America and Africa together here. And we can continue back in time to when Pangaea would have been one single supercontinent. So this is the puzzle-like fit that Alfred Wagner was pointing to as one of the prime pieces of evidence for his theory of continental drift. Another piece of evidence was that Wegener had fossil evidence for several different species that helped support his idea that continents had fit together into one supercontinent, Pangaea, in the past. So in this diagram, you can see that there is fossil evidence for this reptile from the Triassic, Triassic time period called Lystrosaurus. And fossils of Lystrosaurus have been found in Antarctica, yes, Antarctica, a reptile, in India, and over into Africa. Also, a plant fossil named Glossopteris is found across Australia, Antarctica again, India, Africa, and into South America. Another fossil, Mesosaurus, a freshwater reptile found in Southern Africa and Southern South America. And a fourth fossil, Sinognathus, who was found across South America and Africa. So if you look at the patterns there, it's easy to believe that if those continents had been attached, those creatures or that plant might have been evolving uh, at the same time across those land masses as they were attached to one another. An additional piece of evidence that Wegener pointed to was that there are rock structures and rock types and ages that are similar on either side of the Atlantic Ocean. So here you can see in the brown color, the Caledonian Mountains up here in Scandinavia, the same rocks, structures, and ages found in the British Isles, found along the eastern coast of Greenland, found down across North America's eastern coast, and across the west-northwest tip of Africa. And those are folded mountain belts that formed about 300 million years ago in the collision during the actual formation of Pangaea. That's part of Wegener's uh, hypothesis. And then one additional piece of information here is really the evidence of paleoclimates. So in, this, uh, in these two maps, you can see a picture that shows glacial deposits and glacial striations. Uh, so in the top picture, with continents spaced as they are today, you'll notice that in the southeastern portion of South America, where the white area is, in the southern third of Africa, the subcontinent of India, 
the southern third of Australia, and of course Antarctica, all of those places we've identified glacial deposits and glacial striations or grooves that indica indicate the direction of movement of a glacier or an ice sheet. So reconstructing Pangaea in the bottom diagram, you can see that all of those places, in fact, would have at one time in Earth's past been much further south, to uh, so far south that they would have been in the polar region uh, south, and could then have supported glaciers and or ice sheets. And so you would expect to find deposits from those previously existing glaciers or ice sheets. So I think we're ready uh, to go back over those learning targets, list evidence that was used to support the theory of continental drift proposed by Wegener, and discuss the formation and breakup of Pangaea. And I think you're ready for your mastery check quiz. See you in class.